Hey everybody, Old Man Banjo here. I would just, uh, I'm just coming to you today to talk about uh, the awesomeness that is Last Epoch's in-game. Uh, now that I've finally gotten there after a reasonably short amount of time playing the game, I think I'm about 16 hours of game time over the last few days, and I'm, I'm sort of getting into the in-game already. So uh, I'm playing a uh, fire elemental damage spellblade mage. Uh, that uses warding, i.e. converting my mana into physical defense to stay alive, or a physical shield to stay alive. And uh, that build has really started to come online for me. It feels really good. I uh, initially created it just looking at uh, a few builds that I saw online, and then uh, it, it pretty much becomes clear what things you need to take once you know, I want fire, I want crit, and I need shields to stay alive. The game's uh, uh, character building systems are remarkably intuitive. In that uh, respect, the game is more similar to like a um, Titan Quest or a Grim Dawn where character builds, you can reasonably understand how you need to build your character without doing too much research, uh, unlike, you know, Path of Exile. Um, but now I'm through the storyline. My build has come online. I got the unique that my build needs, which playing solo self found is just awesome. Uh, it really, really does feel like the game is being quite generous with uniques. But it sort of needs to be because it it feels like the developers really want you to have a satisfying experience and getting the unique you need is quite satisfying and then on top of that getting a lot of other interesting class-based uniques gives you reason to continue playing the game so i, I was quite pleased with that but anyways so my characters kind of come online the build is now working as i intended it to and uh i'm getting into path of exiles in game uh, uh, i'm getting into last epochs in game systems uh, and I really got to say, I absolutely love them so far. So the, the two main ones that they advertise as being in-game systems are arenas and monoliths. I have not had a chance to do arenas yet. I'm going to, but I really wanted to dig into the monolith system before I got into arenas. I think, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think monoliths are easier to access and arenas are like more top tier. I could be wrong about that though. So uh, oh, I almost did it again. Last epochs. Uh, in-game system is quite interesting. So the game doesn't force you to complete the storyline before you go into its in-game system. The in-game system, I think I gained access to it at around level 38, 40, um, but it starts at level 58. So technically, if you had a character that was strong enough to do level 58 content quite early on, you can get into the in-game system uh, pretty quickly without being gated too much by the storyline. The main reason I think you'd want to complete the storyline is there's quite a few skill points and attribute points that you gain near the end. So that's a reason to continue doing that. Um, but I think there's a, a really quite a few really great points for Last Epoch's um, in-game progression. I really love how if you've ever played uh, Path of Exile, you'll know about the Atlas system. The Atlas system is a system of very complicated nodes that you run via collecting and modifying maps and as you do these maps more maps will drop of a higher tier and thus you progress through the map system on a sort of increase rarity drop and then using the drops from one map to hopefully progress through all of the nodes on the tree it's quite a complicated system anybody i think in the arpg world knows that many a video every season is dedicated to min maxing your progression through the atlas because your knowledge and understanding of probabilities and item grinds and stuff really makes a big difference for that type of progression. Not so here, as far as I understand it. Uh, what happens in Monoliths is, is reasonably simple and easy to understand. There's a network of nodes similar to the Atlas system, but you just progress through them by clicking on the next one after you've successfully completed the last one. So far, I think if you die, you have to start over, which is a little bit different than the map system in PoE, or at least the one time that I did die because I stood up to uh, grab a drink, I, I came back and I was kicked out. So I, I think you have to complete them on your first try. I don't know, I've only died once so far. But um, as you progress through the, the network of nodes, you can find specialized boss nodes, but more importantly, as you progress through the stability meter on the top of the uh, area that you're, you're exploring these nodes in will increase depending on how you perform during these individual nodes. And as you progress through, as you progress your stability meter up, what will happen is you will get storyline quests. 
And after you complete all, I think it's three to four per um, set of nodes, you will progress from the level 58 atlas or level 58 set of monoliths to I think the next one is, I think you have a choice between 60 and 62. I'm just about to upgrade from the 58 ones yet. I'm kind of taking my time uh, down there, but I also think your loot decreases once you get to a high level. I'm not certain, but um, generally really easy to understand progression system if compared to Atlas. I already feel like I've got a hang on it and I can can kind of get through it and, and push the character forward. Uh, so it, it gives you that same expansive sense of in-game progression other than, you know, doing Mephesto runs or Pendleskin runs in Diablo 2, but without the same headaches and math and spreadsheets that you need to do DOE's Atlas efficiently. Uh, again, the other thing I, I've noticed, and I, I think this is uh, reflective of how the game, desi uh, game is designed, is that uh, there's really, really high frequency of very, very useful, unique drops. I wonder how this will work when trade is in the game. I don't think the bazaar has been released yet, at least from the people I asked in chat. I, I didn't, I didn't see any indication of that. I think you can just play with a group of party of friends right now, but there's no like complicated trade and all that. Uh, I wonder how that will work once the trade system is is out. But um, unless I really missed something, I haven't seen uh, any trade offers in game yet. Um, but the, the uh, variety of uniques available really does encourage you to replay. And that combines very well with this idea that, you know, if you have an overpowered character, you can get into the end game really, really fast. Uh, I think I got into the end game after 16 hours of playing. I think I could get that down to two to three hours with a really good build, now knowing how to actually progress through the game's zones. Uh, and this again feeds into the uh, build variety in the game. I didn't put all that much effort into my build. I'm not using the items that the guide that I quickly looked at recommends other than one ring, but uh, it seems re reasonably easy to itemize. And this also feeds into something else that I didn't mention in my last video, which was uh, that the game has a very easily and customizable filter system. So if you want to play, uh, I don't know, I think I'm going to do like a Spriggan Druid next. I just look at another character that's playing a Spriggan Druid that's posted their build copy their filter, and then the filter is going to show me priorities of items that drop that I need for that build. So it makes, it means that you spend a lot more time in game playing and a lot less time in the bank sorting currencies and looking on trade guides and looking up stats and going into P uh, path of, uh, that path of exile app. Oh God, a name slips my mind, but you, you, you end up doing a lot less Excel spreadsheeting and a lot more actually killing stuff, which feels really great. The other thing I realized now that I've beaten the game that I think is, I hadn't realized that I would like, that I would enjoy that that much. There's no replaying of acts in this game. So even in Path of Exile, you know, uh, the difference between act one to five and uh, six to 10 is sort of a repeat. I mean, they're rehashed. There's quite a lot of different content, obviously, but even that's replaying acts. And then you have games like Titan Quest, Grim Dawn, uh, and Diablo 2, where you're literally replaying the same acts you played before to continue on and level up and get to the end game. I like the fact that this game, you can play through the storyline and you can do the end game content. And those two are not mutually exclusive, really. You just need to get to a decent level so that you can start the end game. And it feels like they're really respecting the time of the player. And I, I quite enjoy that because to me, it gives the game a much a much friendlier feeling when I can feel that the devs are respecting my time. I want to play an ARPG. I want to have fun. And uh, it really feels like the devs have designed the game to do that. And it really does feel like, um, as in the previous video, I said, I started playing Last Epoch because one of my commenters in a previous video, uh, the death of ARPGs, I said, you know, I just don't know whether this genre will exist. Now we have Excel spreadsheets for things and someone posted, you need to play Last Epoch. And um, I really do feel the game is self-aware. The game is self-aware that if they force you to min-max too much for lower tier in-game content, the game is gonna become an Excel spreadsheet. And they just, so they, don't st they just don't do it. And uh, that's really encouraging. And uh, I hope you'll try uh, the game out because uh, the Diablo beta phase is gonna be over soon. 
and we are going to have an ARPG drought. And I hope, I hope that this will be a good time for this game because it deserves it. And uh, if the promises on the multiplayer and other services fronts are anything to go by by the time this game hits 1.0, it is going to be a very, very good ARPG. Uh, so that's my video for tonight. I'm sorry about my voice. I was recording an audiobook for six to seven hours straight today. I am, I, my throat is dying. So I'm going to go rest and stop talking. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Peace.